Imagine if you could go back in time and talk to your teenage self and give the most vital tips to maximize your gains. What would you say? And I know a lot of you guys watching this video right now probably are teenagers, and that's why this video is titled Teen Edition. You know, I made a video three years ago. It has over three million views. It's really great. 11 things I wish I knew before I started training. And you guys should, should definitely watch that video. But over the course of the last three years, social media, especially on YouTube and Instagram, has gotten so saturated with garbage content that if I was a teenager today and I saw all of this, I would be overwhelmed. There is just so much information. Where do you even start? So the basis of this video is if I was a teenager today and I had to literally hold myself against the wall and scream in my face to get laser focused, because let's face it, that's what it would have taken for me as a teenager. I was a stubborn, I'm not gonna say douchebag, but I was very stubborn. I had my way of doing things. So if I had to say, teenager Scott, this is what you need to do to make gains, and if you don't do it, you will fail, this is my list, and we're gonna have six of them to talk about, so get ready. But before we get started, you know what to do. Smash that notification bell, click that subscribe button, and guys, if you wanna help out your fellow teenage gym goers, give this video a like, because the more likes videos get, the more they get shared across YouTube, and obviously the more people I can help, so very much appreciated. The first thing I would tell teenage Scott is that you need to track your macros. When I was young, I did not track because I knew I ate enough food. I'm eating all day, all day long. I'm always eating. I'm always drinking protein shakes. I was eating enough food. Guys, I was not eating nearly enough food. I was probably getting maybe 2,000, maybe 2,500 calories in, and that's me being active in sports, training every day, working at a gym, constantly running around, riding my bike everywhere. 2,500 calories trying to build muscle at that age ain't gonna happen. You have got to track your food. There's so many ways you can track it. You can download a meal plan tracker app. You can use the one on my website. You have to know what's going in your body. A lot of you guys think you're eating enough. Guaranteed, if you're not seeing results, it's because you're not eating enough food. As a teenager and just starting out in lifting, the mere fact that you're going to the gym and lifting weights and you've never done it before, you should be growing. Even if you were doing a terrible program with terrible form, the fact that you're adding stress to your muscles and you're getting some sort of breakdown in recovery, you should be growing. So if you're not, you're not eating enough food. And eating enough food is super easy. All you gotta do is start with something like a 40-40-20 split. 40% protein, 40% carbs, 20% fat, and then try to get in at least 3,000 calories a day. That is like a really easy, base to start from. And I say base to start from because it's gonna be up to you from there to take it to the next level. And what I mean by that is, if you're eating 3,000 calories a day and you're going to the gym and you're training and you're not seeing any growth, well, then there's a solution. You need to eat more calories. So bump it up a little bit. I like to go 250, maybe 350 extra calories every two weeks or so and try to bring up those percentages all equally. Stay 40% protein, 40% carbs, and 20% fat. And keep bumping up your calories until you start to see growth. And then if you wanna make lean gains, if you start to see growth but a bit more fat, or fat, or fat coming on, uh, first of all, <laughs> eating fat doesn't make you fat. It's usually the carbohydrates, right? So if you start to see some fat gain, Lower the calories a little bit and start with your carbohydrates. That's it, it's that easy. Everyone tries to make it so complicated, but all you really need to do is keep adding calories bits at a time until you hit a point where you're seeing muscle growth, and then you start adding more calories after that. Then when you hit a point where you start to see fat gain, lower the calories back down, starting with your carbs. And if you wanna use a calculator to show you exactly how to find the perfect base to start from in terms of calories, Check out my meal plan article on my website. I have all the calculations right there. All you literally have to do is plug in your numbers, your height, your age, your weight, all that stuff, and you're good to go. Another thing, if you're having a hard time tracking, right, at least keep this in mind. Protein first. A lot of you guys are young. You might not have control over what you're eating because your parents are cooking all the food. 
So if you sit down for dinner and you know, your parents throw a plate of meat, veggies and potatoes, attack the meat first. Fill up on the meat. Make sure you're getting all that protein in. I know parents can get weird. They're like, I don't want you to take a protein shake because you're gonna get super huge. First of all, educate your parents. Be like, yo bro, it's just protein, all right? It's not steroids, it is a protein shake. Education is key. But if your parents won't buy protein for you or you can't afford it, every single meal load up on the meats first. Load up on the protein first, then fill in with the veggies and then fill in with the carbs, like from, um, well veggies are carbs too, but you know what I'm saying. Fill up on the protein, hit the vegetables, and then hit the potatoes, okay? Load up on as much protein as you can on every single meal. And then for those of you who can't afford to maybe get some pre-made meals made for you, check out Healthy Food Kit. This is a company that I work with. They send pre-made meals right to your door. It'll make your life a lot easier. And you can say, mom and dad, if you don't want me bugging you for food all the time, get me these pre-made meals. I'll pop them in the microwave for two minutes and I'm good to go. The second thing I wish I understood as a teenager was what it actually meant to increase your weights. We hear this all the time. Increase your weights by five pounds every single week. What do you do when you plateau? When you first start training guys, especially as a young teenager, you're gonna make strength gains very quickly, okay? You could probably add five pounds to every single lift for about a month. And then what happens? You taper off because let's face it, if you could continue to add weight every single week, we'd all be making world records on a weekly basis. It makes zero friggin' sense. And I would get so frustrated because as a kid, the exercise I hated the most was the barbell bench press because all my friends were benching like 225 and I was stuck at 135 wondering why the heck I can't increase my bench, right? Because I didn't understand things like progressive overload. I didn't understand that you can add weight and decrease the repetitions in order to make up for the weight that you've added. When I was a teenager, it was, hey, when you go to the gym, it's three sets per exercise, eight reps per exercise, and if you can't do it, you gotta lower the weight or have someone spot you. And that was it, like that was all I knew. And that's what I was told by everybody else to do. Now, if someone would have said, hey Scott, you're doing three sets of eight repetitions and you wanna try to increase the weight, maybe on that third set, increase the weight, but try to only do six repetitions. That way you can still overload and you're still getting enough volume from the first two sets. Or, this amazing idea, add a fourth set and increase your weight on that one. Do your three normals at eight repetitions, add a fourth set and do six. That way you can overload and get your body used to lifting heavier weight. These are things that sound so simple because we talk about them all the time on this channel, but when I was a teenager, nobody explained this stuff to me. And a lot of you guys going to the gym now, what you'll do is you'll increase the weight but you'll keep the three sets of eight reps, but you use crap form to get it done, or a lot of momentum, or you'll have your spotter do the majority of the work versus just doing it the easy way, which is increase weight and decrease reps, all right? It's simple concepts like these that go such a long way, especially when you start in your fitness journey. The third thing I tell myself as a teen is the importance of shoulder packing and keeping your core tight. Now I'm sure a lot of you guys are training right now whenever you lift heavy weight like squatting or deadlifting or benching, you're keeping your core tight. But even if you're doing something like a biceps curl or an overhead press or a lateral raise, triceps press down, pretty much any exercise where you don't have to bend at the core, like abs for example, every other exercise if you practice flexing and squeezing your core, you're basically training the entire core all week long, getting it stronger so that when you start lifting those heavier weights again during your next squatting, deadlifting, or benching session, you're gonna be able to handle more weight. Always focus on core stability, guys. It is super important. And doing planks once or twice a week isn't the way to do it. You should be keeping that core tight on every exercise. And as far as shoulder packing, Shoulder packing is super important and can be applied to a ton of exercises, not just the bench press. And what I see what happens with a lot of guys who are just starting out and they're bench pressing, because they're not used to packing their shoulders properly, they might get into position and start where they're supposed to, but as they press up, their shoulders become unpacked because they don't know what it feels like to maintain that position throughout the entire set. Uh, when you guys are doing exercises like a barbell curl or again, a lateral raise or a triceps press down, these are all exercises where you still should be retracting your shoulder blades and maintaining that position throughout the entire set. So 
any chance you can and it makes sense, pack your shoulder blades, keep your core tight because that's going to transition into other exercises. The fourth thing that I tell myself as a teen is that the pump doesn't necessarily mean more muscle growth. When you guys go to the gym, you can only train a muscle so long before you're basically beating a dead horse. We talk about this all the time, but we love that pump feeling. The greatest feeling you can get in a gym or the most satisfying feeling you can get in the gym is the pump. But what is the pump? The pump is just blood rushing to the area. Now there is evidence that suggests that as you're training and creating these micro tears, sending more blood to the area can help kind of expand and create larger micro tears, which can help with overall muscle growth. That's why my only two series, we do heavy lifting followed by volume lifting to work with mechanical tension and metabolic stress in the same workout. Now, if you want to see maximum growth throughout the entire week, training, let's say your chest once a week, even if you're utilizing those methods, isn't enough. You need multiple growth periods. That's why you do programs like push pull legs or full body. Those programs allow you to hit the same muscle group multiple times throughout the week. But what happens when you do a program like full body? And this is the complaint that I get. Say, how am I building muscle if the pump goes away really fast? Well, if you go in the gym and you're doing full body and you're hitting shoulders, chest and triceps, for example, you're going to feel pretty pumped and awesome. And then usually if that was all you did for your workout, you would leave the gym still feeling pretty pumped in your upper body. But if you're doing full body and you finish upper and it's time to do lower, now you're training your legs. What happens to all that blood? It leaves the upper body and then goes down into the legs and your legs feel pumped. So the pump is just blood entering the area. And when that pump goes away, it's because the blood leaves the area. It doesn't mean that you're building more or less muscle. Okay. In order to create the most amount of um, damage to the muscle and see more growth throughout the entire week, you need to have multiple growth periods where you're training the same muscle groups multiple times throughout the week. And if this was, this is a tip that if I knew as a teenager, I wouldn't have been doing a five day bodybuilding split during the time in my life where I could have made the most gains. It was, it's the biggest waste of time as a newbie lifter. If you're just starting out, you guys need to be doing any other program aside from a five day bodybuilding split. Now, am I saying five day splits are bad? You shouldn't do them. No, what I'm saying is get the foundation built first, make as much gains as you can take advantage of those newbie gains. And then if you want to taper off and maintain, you're not so much worried about fast growth, but you still want to grow, then you can do a five day split. Then hitting each muscle group once a week, you're not going to grow as fast, but you've already built that foundation and have the body that you want. And at that point in time, you're just doing it because you want to hit each muscle once a week because it's fun to have a chest day. It's fun to have a back day. It's fun to have an arm day, right? And for a lot of you guys that might fit your schedule better as you get older, but when you're young, you got all this time to train, push, pull legs, full body, hit those muscles multiple times throughout the week. The fifth tip is that if you want to see abs, you have to train them. Now this didn't really apply to me as a teenager because I was always training my abs. It's always a big part of my training and I would overload them with the various machines in the gym. But nowadays, a lot of people say fluffy things like, oh, if you want to see abs, all you got to do is more cardio and lower your body fat percentage. Now there is truth to this. If you lower your body fat percentage, you will see your abs because everybody has abs. That's what people say. It's really stupid. Just like everybody has biceps. Oh, you can't see your bicep definition. Well, let's lose some body fat and then you'll see them. You'll still have super, super wicked small biceps, but you'll be able to see them a lot better. It's basically what you're saying about abs. Oh, you know, yeah, we all have this like flat layer of abdominals, the rectus abdominis that we can see with a low body fat percentage. But as soon as that body fat percentage goes back up, you're gonna, your abs are going to disappear because you don't train them. If you want thick, blocky abs that look amazing at 7%, but are also still visible, maybe when you're bulking a little bit at 12, 13%, you have to train them like you would any other muscle group. You have to overload them. There has to be flexion and extension squatting, deadlifting, benching, keeping your core super tight on these heavy compound movements. Yes, that trains your core, helps make your core overall stronger, but you are not building big blocky abs because there's zero flexion and extension. Because if you did have flexion, let's say in a squat or a deadlift, you'd snap your back in half, right? That's the entire point of keeping your core tight. So guys, if you want to have blocky abs that are visible, not just when you're super shredded, 
You have to train them. Sixth thing I tell myself as a teen is that you've got to be patient. I would change my workouts all the time because I wasn't seeing fast growth. And by fast growth, I mean I would do a biceps workout and then the next week my biceps weren't bigger, right? That's how we are when we're teenagers, when we're young. We think everything happens overnight. That's not how it works. You've got to stick to the basic principles of what it means to build muscle. Progression over time, multiple growth periods, eating enough food, getting enough sleep, okay? These are the reasons why you grow. You don't grow because you added an extra 10 exercises to your biceps workout, okay? You don't grow because you change your workout every single week and confuse the muscle. This is all BS. The way you grow is through progression over time, increasing your weights, changing your, your, your sets and rep ranges, but sticking with the basic structure of a program that allows you to hit multiple growth periods throughout the week, which means training the same muscle groups multiple times. These are things that are gonna help you grow. Picking up a magazine and seeing you know, a professional bodybuilder's arm workout where he tells you he does 15 different exercises for biceps and triceps, that's not the solution that you need. The solution that you need is for someone to sit you down, tell you to shut your mouth and go to the gym and put the work in instead of complaining about it. And for me as a teenager, that would have worked, but I probably would have needed like a slap too, you know, kind of just to get, just to make sure it's settled in. Like, hey, be patient, eat, go to the gym, train, sleep, repeat, and you'll see results. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you wanna check out the 11 things I wish I knew before I started trading video, all you gotta do is click the link above or in the end screens, I'll place it there as well. But for those of you guys who are trading, and if you have questions that need answers, all you have to do is go to my website, go to the forum section, and post your questions there. I get back to you within 24 to 48 hours. You can literally put videos of your form on exercises. You can write out your routine. You can write out your macros and get the advice you need to make sure you're doing what you need to do and not wasting your time. That's the forums of four guys so that I can help you on a much more consistent basis. I know you guys comment below, which is great, but if you wanna have a back and forth conversation, it's not gonna happen down there. There's just way too many comments and way too many videos. So hit muscularstraint.com, make a profile, and take that next step if you wanna see results. And as always, more good stuff coming soon. Check out the 11 things I wish I knew before I started training over here. And if you guys wanna see this video in article format for a quick refresher, all you gotta do is click the link below, download my app, and then type in 11 things in the article section, and it'll pop right up with the YouTube video embedded at the top. I'll see you guys there.